Dr. Park for your generous introduction. Uh, he just mentioned that I've been contributing to Korea's public diplomacy as a scholar and my wife as a, as a, a journalist, uh, as a, a CEO of the uh, Korea's sort of media diplomacy channel. But in, in reality, uh, you know, truth is far you know, different because as a journalist, I've done a lot of, personally, I've done a lot of damages on Korea's reputation. <laughs> And that's true for every, I guess, uh, journalist for uh, working for international media. You know, you know, n news by nature is very negative. So perhaps, perhaps 90% of the stories I wrote for Korea, for our international readers, were unfortunately negative. And I'm here, basically, to to make up for that. You know, <laughs> and hopefully uh, this works today. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Thank you uh, for coming to our third and final session of the program, uh, which is the uh, Korea's role uh, as a middle power in public diplomacy. Uh, we have a little bit more than uh, an hour and uh, 40 minutes. Uh, we, we will uh, have uh, our uh, uh, presentations from three dis distinguished uh, presenters and that will be followed by uh, comments from two panelists. Uh, again, the title of this session is Korea's role as a middle power in public diplomacy. Uh, but that's in English. But in Korean, uh, it's not middle power. Middle power in Korean happens to be, it's called 중견 국가 in Korean. The dictionary translation of that word is middle country or middle level country. And uh, there's nothing about power in that term. So it's a little bit misleading, uh, particularly for Koreans. Uh, when we uh, you know, read the, uh, hear the word uh, middle power. I mentioned this because uh, in Korea, there's a perception among Koreans that Korea is not a middle power at all. And Korea doesn't want to be a middle power at all. Uh, that perception is quite different from the perceptions from outside Korea. I, I've listened to the first session of today's program and uh, a lot of foreign participants here, panelists, they were all uh, unanimously saying that Korea is actually a solid middle power or more than a middle power, perhaps. But you know, un interestingly, uh, that perception is not common in Korea because uh, Koreans, we, there's a saying in Korea that uh, Korea is a shrimp as a nation. Korea is a shrimp, it's not, not because Korea is delicious. <laughs> Korea is shrimp because Korea is tiny, small. And there's this expression that Korea is like a, a shrimp, tiny shrimp, caught among big whales, big powers, neighboring powers. As, as you know, Korea is surrounded by you know, China, Russia, Japan, and, and even in the US uh, across the Pacific. So as a small, tiny shrimp surrounded by these big whales, we have something, I guess, against power, the world power. So that's probably why uh, Korea doesn't really, many Koreans, not everybody, many Koreans, uh, do not think Korea is a power uh, because we've been, as a small shrimp, we've been, in many cases, harassed, intimated, or even you know, invaded by big powers. So that's sort of like a, the mentality we have here. And today's session, I believe, for you, your mission is to change that perception among Koreans, hopefully, because you can particularly foreign participants can, can uh, tell us, tell Korean people that Korea is, uh, after all, a solid middle power who can play a positive role in global matters, in particularly public diplomacy. And also, your second job mission is tell us how, probably. You know, a lot of you, you know, some of you are Korean experts and some of you are not. Both of you can contribute in this matter, hopefully. Uh, and of, of course, uh, my final comment for my opening remark is, you know, Korea is a shrimp, so next time you eat shrimp, think of Korea. <laughs> okay. 
so let me, uh, without further ado, introduce our uh, distinguished panel members. Uh, from my uh, left, from my left, we have Dr. Choi Jin Woo, uh, uh, who's, uh, just a second, yes. Dr. Choi Jin Woo, professor of Department of Political Science and Diplomacy at Hanyang University, okay? He's, uh, okay, uh, he was the president of uh, the Korean Society for Contemporary Edu uh, European Studies in 2010 and the director general of the Korean Political Science Association in 2007. He also served as the executive chair of the organizing committee of the World Congress for Korean Politics and Society in 2009. On his left, uh, we have Ambassador uh, Ma Yong-sam. Okay, uh, Ambassador Ma Yong-sam for public, dip uh, public diplomacy uh, at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Mr. Uh, Ma Yong-sam is the, uh, he joined the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in 1981, uh, and he worked at the Korean embassies in the US, Bangladesh, and the uh, Korean mission in the UN. In 2005, he was appointed as the first head to uh, the first head of the Korean representative office in Palestine. During 2008 and 2011, he served as the ambassador to Israel. In Seoul, he worked as the director general for Africa and Middle East Affairs of the Foreign Ministry and Trade. And uh, on his left, we have. Uh, Professor Philip Sip. Uh, professor Philip Sip is the uh, uh, professor of journalism and public diplomacy, and professor of international relations at the University of Southern California. Uh, and during 2009 and 2013, he was the director of USC's Center on Public Diplomacy. Okay, on his left we have Mr. Paul Hatos. Uh, uh, General Director of the Hungarian Balassi Institute. Uh, Mr. Hatos graduated from the, uh, it's a difficult name, uh, at, okay, uh, in Hungary in uh, studying history, and he holds a, a, an MA in Literature and Law, and he has a PhD in history. He studied as research fellow at the University of Geneva, uh, and Hattos began, Mr. Hattos began his career as a second, uh, secondary school teacher and has been teaching at this university since 1998. Uh, on his left, uh, last but not least, Mrs. Jean Tan. Uh, she is uh, the executive director of Singaporean, uh, Singapore International Foundation, Mrs. Jean Tan. Uh, she is the uh, executive director of the foundation uh, before joining the foundation, she was the press secretary to Manpower Minister and the Ministry's Director of Communication. Her earlier posts included stints at the Ministry of Information and the Arts, uh, Singapore Film Fest Commission, and as a diplomatic in Washington, D.C. As you can see, we have a very good mix of people from different backgrounds and different regions. We have uh, two Korean uh, panelists and one gentleman from Europe, one gentleman from uh, the US, and one lady from uh, East Asia. So very uh, ideal mix, I believe. Uh, we have, again, uh, a little bit more than uh, one, one and a half hours today. Uh, we will start with our presentations, uh, three presentations, uh, Dr. Che, uh, Ambassador Ma, and Professor Sip will make presentations, uh, which will be followed by comments from these panelists as well as the floor. Okay, why don't we uh, then start with uh, Dr. Che's presentation. Dr. Che, why don't we give him a round of applause? Okay, I would like to thank first uh, the, the people at uh, Korean Foundation uh, for inviting me uh, at this wonderful event, and I would like to 
say I'm sorry uh, to the staffs of the KF and the audiences here uh, for the late submission of presentation material. I'm the only one who is not included in the uh, book lead, uh, but I suppose the, the KF staffs uh, distribu distributed my uh, uh, presentation material uh, uh, separately. Okay. Uh, uh, before starting my presentation, I would like to make a comment on what uh, just uh, what the moderator just said. Uh, he compared uh, Korea uh, to the shrimp, and but there are some Koreans uh, who think of Korea as a dolphin uh, instead of shrimp. It used to be a shrimp, but now uh, Korea has grown up and it uh, became a dolphin. Uh, wisely and shrewdly uh, maneuvering uh, the ocean crowded by huge mink whales. <laughs> so uh, maybe that's our aspiration, but a uh, lot of people believe that uh, the Korea uh, can be, uh, can play a role of dolphin uh, in this you know, uh, jungle like uh, 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 East Asia. Okay, uh, I'll start my presentation with a little bit of thought on the meaning uh, of public diplomacy and how the concept of the soft power fits in here. Uh, okay, the, the ultimate goal of public diplomacy is, as uh, Philip Zip uh, reminded us of earlier t uh, this morning, uh, is maximization or uh, enhancement of national interests. Yeah, to do that, uh, the public diplomacy aims for winning hearts and minds of people of other countries. Okay, uh, then uh, what are the resources for public diplomacy? Uh, this is a soft power. Or it can be, it can mean attractiveness or suasiveness or effectiveness uh, that arouse motivation to follow or emulate. Okay, the strategy of public diplomacy has taken, uh, can take uh, many different forms. Uh, first of all, uh, talking and listening and conversing, collaborating. Uh, you can say monologue or dialogue or working together or whatever. Okay, then uh, we can come up to a definition of uh, public policy, uh, uh, which is activities to win hearts and minds of peoples of other countries for the purpose of maximizing national interests by utilizing various soft power resources in a variety of ways. But with this uh, definition in mind, now let me move on to uh, middle power. Okay, what does middle power mean? Uh, I think we can uh, describe middle power in three different terms. Uh, capability, identity, and relation relationality. Okay, uh, if a country is considered to have enough hard power resources to be reckoned with, at least in a regional context, if not a global context, by neighboring states. And if it behaves according to code of conduct required for responsible members of international community, and if it is willing and able to initiate or actively participate in cooperation with like-minded countries of various levels of power capabilities, in, deal, in dealing with issues of common concern, then I would call it a middle power. Of course, this is not a very uh, rigorous analytical concept, but uh, the, this definition I uh, derived from uh, some uh, empirical observation, uh, especially observation uh, of Korea. Okay, then. Uh, so for a middle power, then uh, public diplomacy is a very useful tool, can be a very useful tool in maximizing national interests because the primary resources used for public diplomacy is a soft power where a middle power could have less com 
compa less comparative disadvantage. Okay, well, what, what do I mean by that? Yeah. And what about soft power for middle power? Soft power is important for a middle power because a middle power can compete with a great power in the field of soft power due to relatively even distribution of soft power between great and middle powers. Of course, great powers have more, so more soft power than middle powers, but uh, the power discrepancy between social, I, I mean, uh, great power and middle power in soft power is less than the power discrepancy in hard power. Okay, second, the soft power is cheaper than hard power so that a middle power can afford it. You know, middle power like Korea can't you know, amass all the weapons like the United States, but we can have our own attractiveness and our own suasiveness. So uh, I guess it, uh, the soft power, uh, I mean middle power can afford uh, soft power while it can't afford the hard power. Okay, this is uh, uh, the same thing, basically. Okay. Uh, and is Korea middle power then? I think so. Uh, Korea is middle power on all, all counts uh, I just mentioned above. Uh, first of all, uh, capability. Uh, Korea, is, Korea is 15th largest economy, about 10th military power, and uh, it's in the uh, neighborhood of 10th, even in the Olympic medal race, uh, and in many other uh, counts as well. And Korea's identity, uh, foreign policy identity, uh, Korea is willingly accommodating global norms and acting accordingly. And its relationality, uh, Korea is taken seriously and amicably by many like-minded and like-sized countries, thanks to its attractiveness and suasiveness, I suppose. Okay, then what kind of soft power assets uh, does Korea have? Uh, you can divide them into many different uh, ways, but uh, I, I just I'll just mention five here. Uh, first is cultural assets, like a Korean wave, including K-pop and so opera, movies, food, fashion, classical music, art, literature, dance, etc. And it has also normative assets, in that it doesn't have any imperial records, and it is active norm taker, potential norm setter, uh, and it has virtually abolished the death penalty, and it its role in peacekeeping is increasing, and its role in international development cooperation is also expanding. And Korea also has knowledge assets. Uh, Korea is a success story in economy and the political development. It is an IT leader, and it also has some academic excellence in some fields. Okay, and it also has corporate assets. Uh, it has uh, the brand power of Samsung, Hyundai, LG, which are globally uh, renowned uh, conglomerates. And it also has network assets in that uh, it, 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 it actively participates in multilateral organizations and it also has a potential as a bridging country between big powers and small powers, between advanced countries and developing countries, between the West and the East, bet and between probably China and Japan, and hopefully between ASEAN and plus three countries as well. Okay, now with these uh, qualifications and resources, uh, uh, Korea is in good position to play the role of a middle power. But I would, I would like to suggest a few things for the future Korea's, uh, uh, Korea's future uh, public a diplomacy. Uh, they are basically two things. One of them is about the notion of national interests, and another is the public diplomacy strategy. I'm not, talk, I'm not going to talk about a very detailed, specific things, but a, I, I would like to uh, uh, draw a broad picture. 
Okay. To elaborate on uh, the two points that I mentioned, let me take, uh, let me talk first about uh, three sorts of interests and two kinds of public diplomacy. Okay, uh, I think there are three interests, three kinds of interests that all uh, countries pursue. Uh, they are security interests and prosperity and solidarity. And uh, I think there are two kinds of public diplomacy. One is competitive public diplomacy, uh, the goal of which is maximization of exclusive or parochial national interests. And the, in the process, uh, the competition with rivals would be inevitable, and its effect uh, is uh, the likelihood of instigating conflict among nations. As such, it is an extension of traditional diplomacy and sort of zero-sum game. Okay, I also uh, think that there can be a, a cooperative public diplomacy, uh, the goal of which would be fulfill, fulfillment of enlightened self-interests. And uh, in the process, uh, uh, the support garnering um, from uh, various countries for the same cause uh, is needed. And its uh, effect is uh, to contribute to peaceful coexistence. As such, it is a paradigmatic shift from uh, traditional diplomacy. Okay, uh, going back to the, the interests, uh, I suggest three categories of interests as a goal to achieve uh, by public diplomacy. As I said, security, prosperity, and solidarity. The first two are the national interests in the traditional sense, and the fulfillment of these interests are perfectly legitimate foreign policy goal, which is also shared by traditional diplomacy. The last one, solidarity, is a relatively new one. Uh, what solidarity am I talking about? Uh, solidarity with whom? I would say uh, solidarity with uh, global citizens. Each country has its own particularistic interests, but it also shares common interests with other countries. The common interests that Korea shares with other countries includes like uh, uh, the provision of global uh, common interests, public goods such as uh, the prevention or mitigation, if you will, of climate change, uh, preservation of biodiversity, stopping of piracy on the high seas, tracing down human trafficking, contributing to uh, international development cooperation, spreading the human rights norm, resolving intercultural conflicts, encouraging recon reconciliation between old foes, promoting rule-based multilateral approach to uh, global affairs, and etc. The provision of these goods are not only beneficial to global citizens at large, but also to Korea as well. In that sense, it can be called enlightened self-interest. The realization of this sort of interest through cooperative public diplomacy is important for Korea because it helps Korea and other countries in obtaining the traditional national interests by providing stable and predictable international environment, and because the pursuit of these enlightened self-interests itself will further increase the soft power of the country. But so far, uh, Korea seems to uh, have defined the goal of public uh, uh, diplomacy uh, as maximization of uh, a little bit narrowly defined national interests so that it has been, mm, I would say, trapped in the framework of uh, competitive public uh, diplomacy. Therefore, uh, I would uh, suggest more attention should be paid to cooperative public diploma, diploma, uh, oops, diplomacy from now on. Okay, uh, then what to do with uh, the strategy? Uh, 
So while it is a good news uh, that Korea is now opening its eyes to the importance of public diplomacy, uh, it seems that Korea's public diplomacy activities are mostly focused on talking part of it, uh, busy with using its soft power resources, I mentioned, trying to beam its attractiveness to other countries, leaving listening um, part uh, somewhat neglected. I'm not saying that Korea is not listening at all. What I'm trying to say is that the talking part of Korea's public diplomacy seems to outweigh heavily the listening part of it. The Korean government and the public alike are far more concerned with how to let other peoples know more and better about Korea and take a great pride in the publicity Korea gets abroad. It seems that Koreans are thinking that the more foreigners are exposed to something Korean, the more they will like Korea. That might be true, but I guess that is not enough. What is conspicuously in short supply in discourse about public diplomacy in Korea is a reflection upon how to know more and better about other countries, their culture, their desire, and their world views. Korea is busy selling its image, value, and products, but not really enthusiastic about what peoples of other countries think and feel. Korea is trying to win hearts and minds of other peoples by talking and talking alone, I would say. A better or alternative, I think, is to put, is to put more emphasis on listening on top uh, of talking. So listening um, is sometimes uh, far more important to get closer to other people because, uh, as Joseph Nye said, Uh, it's a uh, universal human desire uh, to be heard. So if you want to win other people's hearts and minds, then uh, you will first have to uh, listen to them and know what they have to say. Okay, uh, that's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Choi. Uh, so he made a few interesting points uh, in his speech. First of all, dolphin, not a shrimp. Okay, so I keep that in my mind. Uh, and also, Korea can play a bridge role between uh, many, many countries. Uh, as a, a, a many country between advanced and, and developing countries, big countries and small countries. Uh, this will uh, undoubtedly uh, lead to a question whether Korea can play a uh, bridge role, uh, being a very close ally of the United States, and this question has been asked many times, and I, I honestly do not know the, the uh, right answer to this question. Being a close ally to one of, uh, the sole superpower of the world, can uh, Korea play this kind of role, uh, uh, bridge role, which is supposed to be uh, in, uh, neutral? First of all, uh, and his final point was on the uh, the listening part of public diplomacy. We all agree that listening is more important than talking, uh, and in fact, Koreans are known for uh, for listening uh, individually. You know, we don't talk much; we listen a lot. But as a nation, apparently, uh, maybe we, we talk too much rather than we listen. The question is how we can how can we listen to other people's voices? Maybe I'd like to get some uh, insights from uh, the floor and as well as the uh, panel uh, later after we are done with other presentations. Now we can turn to uh, Ambassador Ma again, the uh, uh, ambassador for public diplomacy at the Foreign Ministry of the South Korea. Ms. Ambassador Ma. So again, please welcome Mr. Ma. The absent session has been, uh, the Chungyeonggut, uh, and the Kongong Wegu, and so, uh, we have been discussing. Uh, so, in this session, we have come to the Korean Kongong Wegu. Uh, 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 u
한국의 공공외교의 전략에 대해서 어, 살펴보도록 하겠습니다 우리나라가 어, 공공외교를 추진함에 있어서 어, 첫 번째로 어, 총체적이고 어, 종합적인 공공외교를 추진을 하고 있습니다 어, 공공외교의 범위에 보면 은 주로 저희들이 한네 가지 정도로 어, 얘기를 하고 있습니다 하나는 그 문화외교 그 그리고 예술교류 어, 이것을 얘기하고 있고 두 번째는 어, 저희들이 그 우리나라의 정책을 <웃음> 외국에 어떻게 설명하느냐 그러니까 정책 홍보가 되겠죠 어, 이 부분 세 번째는 우리 자신의 것을 어떻게 잘 외국에 알리느냐 그러니까 한국의 역사 문화 한국어 이런 것을 잘 알리는 것네 번째는 지금 현재 어, 우리나라가 어, 도움을 받는 나라에서 도움을 주는 나라로 이제 바뀌고 있습니다. 여기에서 우리가 어, 국제사회에서 우리가 응분이 해야 할 역할 그러니까 어, 사랑, 나눔, 기여 이러한 요소 이네 가지 요소를 다 합쳐서 저희들은 이제 공공외교라고 하는데 여기서 종합적이고 총체적인 공공외교라고 하는 것은 이네 가지 요소를 서로 분리하는 것이 아니라 이것을 합치고 조정하고 융합을 시켜서 종합적으로 추진해 나간다는 것을 의미를 합니다 어, 두 번째로 어, 이 우리 어, 공공외교라고 하는 것에 대해서는 어, 지금 현재 어, 정부만으로서는 공공회계를 추진하기가 굉장히 어렵다고 생각을 합니다 왜냐하면 우리 정부가 지금 현재 하고 있는 어, 역할 역량이라고 하는 것은 시민사회 그리고 기업 이 전체를 따져볼 때 정부가 할수 있는 역할이라고 해서는 굉장히 적고 또 앞으로 점점점점 더 적어져 갑니다 따라서 이 가운데서 우리가 정부가 할수 있는 역할이 무엇이냐 우리가 정부가 리드를 물론 해야 되겠죠 가이드라인을 줘야 되겠죠 그러나 우리 전체의 국민들이 함께 할수 있는 이 공공외교를 추진해 나가고자 하는 것입니다 어, 그 경우에는 그 대상이 우리 각 개인이 될 수도 있고 시민사회가 될 수도 있고 기업이 될 수가 있고 또 학계가 될 수가 있고 언론계가 될 수가 있는 것입니다 이 전체를 갖다가 우리가 다 함께 지금 현재 어, 어, 역할을 나누어서 해 나가고자 하는 것입니다 그래서 어, 원래 우리가 국민과 함께하는 공공외교라는 캠페인을 시작을 했습니다 그리고 어, 이 국민들이 직접 본인들이 아이디어를 내서 그 프로그램을 기획을 하고 그 기획을 한 것이 아 정부에서 좋다고 인정이 되면 은 그것을 우리나라에서 또는 외국에 나가서 실질적으로 우리 국민들이 직접 이행을 하게 되는 것입니다 그래서 국민 주도로 하는 그런 공공외교를 지금 하고 있습니다 원래 저희들이 청년 공공외교단 그리고 시니어 공공외교단이라는 것을 조직을 했습니다 청년 공공외교단이라고 하는 것은 한국에 있는 우리 한국 사람 젊은이하고 외국 사람 젊은이를 합쳐서 우리가 그룹을 만들었습니다 그 사람들이 공공외교를 직접 기획을 합니다 그리고 실제로 해외에 나가서 또는 한국에서 그것을 이행을 합니다. 우리 정부에서 일정한 도움을 주고 있습니다. 마찬가지로 시니어 공공외교단도 그러한 역할을 하고 있습니다. 개도국 꿈나무 사업이라는 것을 우리가 지금 진행을 하고 있습니다. 이것은 어, 지금 현재 우리 대학에서 예체능계 대학을 졸업하는 사람 또는 어, 그게 종사하고 있는 사람들이 연간 한 2만 명 내지 3만 명 굉장히 많습니다. 이분들이 사회에 나왔을 때 취업 문제도 상당히 지금 현재 어렵습니다 그래서 저희들이 대학교 다니는 동안에 많은 기회를 부여하기 위해서 이 사람들이 개도국에 가서 거기에 오케스트라라든가 또는 미술반을 운영을 하면서 어린애들을 가르치고 거기에서 아주 우수한 사람들을 오디션을 통해서 뽑아서 한국에 데리고 와서 한국에서 교육을 시켜주는 겁니다 그 이러한 프로그램들 그리고 여기서 또한 가지 우리 국민과 하는 공공외교에서 눈여겨봐야 할 것이 바로 기업입니다. 기업이 지금 현재 저희들은 기업에서 하는 공공외교 활동 굉장히 활발합니다. 이것을 지금 기업의 사회적 책임이라고 해서 Corporate Social Responsibility라고 하는데 지금 우리 기업들도 지금 현재 이 분야에 활동하고 있는 것이 굉장히 많습니다. 예산도 엄청나게 지금 투자를 하고 있습니다. 
지금 현재 총체적으로 볼때 우리 기업이 공공외교 활동에 사용하는 액수가 우리 정부가 복지 예산의 어, 전체 복지 예산의 한 3분의 1 가까이 그 해당하는 금액을 우리 기업에서 하고 있습니다. 그런데 우리 기업의 공공외교 활동도 대체로 역사가 짧습니다. 그래서 지금 현재까지 하, 하고 있는 활동상을 어, 저희들이 이게 보면은 어, 자선 사업, 그러니까 charity 프로그램 여기에 이제 국한되어 있는 것이 많습니다. 그런데 우리 기업만 하더라도 이제 우리의 대기업들은 세계 기업을 선도를 하고 있습니다. 많은 나라에서 우리 기업이 CSR 활동을 어떻게 하고 있느냐 하는 것을 보고 있습니다. 따라서 이제는 자선 활동의 범위를 넘어서 한 차원 높게 공동선 예를 들면은 노동권 문제라든가 어, 환경 문제라든가 어, 또는 그 기후 변화 문제라든가 이런 것을 직접 우리 기업들이 태클하는 그런 공공 외교 활동을 하는 것이 바람직할 거라고 생각을 합니다. 어, 저희들은 어, 네트워킹을 하는 기초 하에서 공공 외교를 추진을 하고 있습니다. 어, 그렇다면 그 대상이라고 하면 은 외국에 있는 일반 대중뿐만 아니라 어, 거기에 우리가 생각하는 그 여론 현성자 그리고 아니면 은 주요 영향력 있는 사람들 이런 그룹이 한 그룹이 있을 수 있고 또 지금은 우리의 청년들과 외국에 있는 청년들이 SNS로 다 연결이 되어 있습니다 그래서 우리가 그 청년청을 굉장히 중요한 어, 공공외교의 파트너로 생각을 하고 있습니다 뿐만 아니라 우리가 지금 해외에 우리가 720만이라는 어, 우리 동포 사회가 있습니다. 그 사회 그리고 참전용사 그리고 입양화 이러한 그룹과 함께 공공외교를 추진하고자 하는 것입니다. 그 한국에 있는 외국인들이 많습니다. 지금 150만 명입니다. 유학생도 있고 노동자들도 있고 또 다문화 가정을 이루고 있는 어, 사람들도 있습니다. 많은 경우에 어, 저희들이 그 사람들이 한국에서 어, 생활을 하고 한국에서 교육받고 이렇게 하니까 좋은 이미지를 갖고 있습니다 그러나 왕왕 어, 오히려 이 사람들이 친한적인 성향을 띌 거라고 기대했는데 본국에 돌아가서는 오히려 반항적인 성향을 띠는 경우도 있습니다 거기에 대해서 우리가 굉장히 크게 반성을 해야 되는데 저희들 생각 같아서는 이 사람들이야말로 어, 우리나라의 공공외교의 가장 최전선에 나가 있는 퍼스트 메신저라고 생각을 합니다. 왜냐하면 실시간으로 일어나는 자기의 경험을 SNS를 통해서 본국에 있는 자기 친구, 자기 가족들한테 보내는 겁니다. 따라서 한국에 있는 외국 사람들의 마음을 우리가 얻지 못한다면 바깥에 외국에 있는 외국 사람들의 마음을 얻기는 더 어려울 것이라고 생각을 합니다. 어, 그 다음에는 현지 맞춤형 어, 공공외교입니다 지금 현재 우리가 권역별로 지역별로 어, 공공외교 전략을 새롭게 수립을 하고 있습니다 그런데 문제는 그 같은 지역에 있는 나라 하더라도 나라에 따라서 종교적으로 이념적으로 전통적으로 문화적으로 그리고 멘탈리티상 모두 다릅니다 우리가 178개국의 178개 해외 공간을 가지고 있습니다 거기서 그 현지에서 파악한 여러 가지 상황을 우리 공공외교 하는 데 접목을 시킵니다 그래서 맞춤형 공공외교를 하면서 플러스 알파의 역할을 우리 공간에서 하고 있습니다 어, 마지막으로 어, 우리 전략으로서는 어, 저희들은 쌍방향 이, 어, 교류라고 그렇게 지금 하고 있습니다 어, 조금 전에 최 교수님께서 토킹이냐 리스닝이냐 이렇게 말씀을 하시는데 마찬가지입니다 이것도 우리가 문화사절단을 보내는 경우에도 마찬가지로 우리가 다른 나라의 문화사절단도 받으면서 우리의 문화가 국수주의다 베타성이 있다는 것이 아니라 어, 훨씬 다른 나라의 문화를 갖다가 서로 접하면서 융합하면서 좋아하면서 발전시켜 나가는 것 그것이 바로 저희들의 하나의 전략으로 삼고 있습니다 그 중경국 공공외교에 있어서 어, 지금 현재 상황 변화에 따라서 어, 어느 정도의 차이가 있습니다 1965년에 공공외교라는 퍼블릭 디프로먼시라는 터미널러지가 생겨났습니다 미국의 굴리온 박사가 그렇게 명명을 했는데 당시에는 냉전기간 중이었습니다 그래서 어, 이게 경쟁을 통해서 또는 대립을 통해서 
또는 생존을 위한 공공 외교를 했었습니다. 그런데 지금 현재는 상황이 많이 바뀜으로 말미암아 모든 나라에서 공생 공존의 필요성을 느끼게 되고 그래서 공공 외교의 기능도 이제는 소통과 화합으로 넘어가게 되었던 것입니다. 어, 그래서 지금 현재 중견국으로 대면해서 우리 한국이 중견국이라고 하는 경우에 이 공공 외교의 역할이 훨씬 더 높아지게 되는 것입니다. 우리가 아주 급속한 그 시간에 엄청난 발전을 이룩했고 더 경제 발전뿐만 아니라 민주화도 함께 이룩했습니다. 그렇기 때문에 많은 나라에서 한국을 그롤 모델로 삼고자 하고 있습니다. 물론 서구에 우리보다 훨씬 더 역사가 깊은 나라들이 많이 있습니다. 선진국들이 있지만 어, 여러 나라에서 그 어, 선진국 전통적인 서구의 선진국을 따라하기에는 부담이 있고 불편하다고 느끼는 나라들이 꽤 있습니다. 한국의 경우 두 세대만의 그야말로 바닥에서부터 지금 현재 어, 선진국까지로 어, 진입을 했습니다. 그래서 한국이 어, 훨씬 더 편안한 모델로 그렇게 어, 삼고 있고 뿐만 아니라 최근에 들어와서 이러한 발전뿐만 아니라 K-POP, K-DRAMA, K-FOOD 이런 것을 통해서 한국이 그야말로 왠지 한국이 좋다 한국이 매력적인 국가다라고들 많이 느끼게 되었던 것입니다 그래서 공공외교의 역량이 훨씬 더 높아지고 있습니다 한국이 국제사회에서 지위가 높아지면서 점점점점 그 역할이 조금씩 높아지는데 이거에 대해서 마, 많은 나라에서 자연스럽게 수긍을 하고 받아들입니다 그런데 지금은 상황이 어떻게 되냐 하면 한국이 조금 더 역할을 해줬으면 좋겠다라는 요청사항이 굉장히 많이 들어오고 있습니다 특히 개발협력 분야 그리고 어 기후변화 신재생 에너지 분야에서는 우리가 상당히 선도적인 역할을 했습니다 그래서 GGGI 그 그리고 녹색기후기금 이런 것 전부 다 지금 한국에서 유치를 했고 뿐만 아니라 지금 현재 우리가 핵정상회담도 유치를 했고 UN 피스키핑 프로세스도 지금 나가고 있습니다 그러다 보니까 한국이 그야말로 선도적인 역할 뿐만 아니라 중개적인 역할도 해주기를 기대를 하는 것입니다 그게 따라서 사실상 저희들이 훨씬 더 지금 역할이 높아지고 있습니다 마지막으로 한국의 우리 공공외교의 어, 미래의 방향에 대해서 말씀을 드리겠습니다 그 공공 외교에 있어서 어 목적이라고 하면은 아침에도 많은 분들이 얘기하셨습니다. 우리의 국가 이미지를 높이고 그에 따라서 우리의 내셔널 인트레스트를 높이는 것입니다. 어 이게 이제 좁은 의미로서의 공공 외교였는데 조금 전에 최 교수님께서도 말씀하시기를 우리의 대한민국의 공공 외교는 이 바로 이 좁은 의미의 목표에 국한되어 있다라고 말씀하셨는데 맞는 말입니다. 왜냐하면은 우리가 공공외교라는 정책을 도입한 것이가 3년밖에 되지 않습니다. 지금 현재 많은 것을 기초를 쌓아야 되는 것은 단계에 있기 때문에 우리의 국가 이미지 높이는 데 상당히 급급한 것이 사실입니다. 그러나 저희들이 생각하기에 이제 인권 문제다, 평화다, 안정이다, 복지다 이런 문제에 대해서 공동선 이거에 대해서 많은 우리가 관심을 가지게 되었습니다. 그래서 지금 현재는 어, 이 부분을 우리가 조금 더 역할을 하기 위한 그런 어, 노력을 하고 있습니다 한국의 경우에는 이제 우리의 어, 국가 국경의 바운더리를 넘어서서 지역적인 공공외교에서 어떤 역할을 할까라는 것을 또 생각을 하고 있습니다 어, 작년에 한중일 3국의 정상들께서 한중일 3국 간의 공공외교 포럼을 설치하는 것을 갖다 한번 추진해 보자라고 합의를 하셨습니다. 그거에 따라서 저희들은 일차적인 어, 어, 기초로서 어, 지난 9월에 한중 공공 외교 포럼을 출범을 시켰습니다. 그래서 그걸 통해서 양국이 할수 있는 공공 외교가 무엇이냐, 어, 동북아에서 우리가 할수 있는 예, 예, 일이 무엇이냐 하는 갖다가 공동으로 지금 현재 협의에 나가고 있고 앞으로 나가서 이 한중 공공 외교 포럼이 한중일 공공 외교 포럼으로 발전시키기 위해서 지금 현재 우리가 기초 작업을 이미 시작을 했습니다. 그리고 
이러한 이, 어, 지역적인 것을 넘어서서 이제는 글로벌 퍼블릭 디플로머시에서 우리가 할 역할이 무엇이냐 하는 것을 또 저희들이 생각을 하고 있습니다 이미 이러한 양자 간의 공공외교 포럼이 어, 동북아 지역을 벗어나서 지금 미국하고도 협의를 하고 있고 어, 그리고 호주하고도 하고 있고 유럽하고도 지금 하고 있습니다 그것이 결실을 맺으면 과연 우리가 국제 무대에서 또 국제기구 유엔을 통한 국제기구 이런 데서 통해서 공공행위를 할, 함께 할수 있는 방향이 무엇이냐 하는 것을 우리가 어, 협의해 나가고자 하는 것입니다 네 감사합니다 Thank you very much uh, Ambassador Ma As he said uh, Korea has uh, practiced this diplo uh, public diplomacy on an official level only for three years and as you could hear, they have achieved uh, many different, many, a uh, lot of things during those three years. Uh, if I may, I, uh, I can summarize his uh, speech into a few points. Uh, again, the government's effort to combine various assets of Korea's public diplomacy, culture and art, uh, policy, foreign policy promotion, and Korean knowledge, and Korea's aid to uh, developing countries. And uh, his second point, more important point, was uh, government efforts to combine public diplomacy activities of many different players. Uh, government cannot do it alone, so uh, it's working with you know, citizens, NGOs, and civil society, and also companies and media. Uh, and the question is, uh, we have very short history of doing this, uh, working with you know, non-state actors. And would like to hear from you about your experiences in working with uh, non-governments in terms of public diplomacy. Uh, and final point he made about uh, uh, establishing a joint uh, public diplomacy forum with other countries. Uh, uh, we started with J uh, China and uh, planning to expand that to a China-Korea-Japan public diplomacy forum. Given the fact that Korea has some rocky relations with Japan on various issues, uh, this is very timely and also very challenging, I believe, because how can you forge this kind of public diplomacy alliance with Japan when you, you have a very sour relations with Japan? Okay, uh, now we will turn to uh, Professor Sip uh, from the University of Southern California. Uh, Professor Sip. Again, please join me in, in welcoming uh, Professor Sip. I'm very low tech, so I get the equipment out of the way. Um, well, first I want to again thank the, uh, the Korea Foundation for organizing this conference. I want to thank all of you for sticking with us through this, this long day and into the late afternoon. Uh, I, I very much enjoyed the, uh, the comments by my two colleagues on this, on this panel, and I want to continue sort of along the path that they laid out, but to probably veer off in a, in a way that uh, talks about a much more assertive approach to Korean public diplomacy. There are two fundamental aspects of Korea's approach to global public diplomacy that I would like to address. The first is how public diplomacy relates to the strategic interests of Korea as a leader in East Asia, and more specifically, as a counterweight to Chinese influence. The second issue concerns ways that new media might be used to enhance Korea's development of innovative public diplomacy programs. Now, this first issue, 
numerous governments and citizens around the world would like to see an effective counterbalance to China and East Asia. Korea, with its commitment to democracy, its sophisticated economy, and its long-established ties to the United States and other Western countries, is in a strong position to play this role if it chooses to do so. Korea is already recognized as a leading exponent of soft power. Its traditional culture and exportable technologies are widely recognized and admired, and even its culinary diplomacy is much appreciated in many places. Also respected is the lifestyle of the Korean public, with benefits of new technologies and personal freedom, providing the foundation on which prosperity is built. In considering these attributes, which happen to be the ones that underscore the differences between Korea and China, I recommend emphasizing those that will have the most appeal to targeted audiences and will do the most to advance the national interest of the Republic of Korea. This point is important. Being liked and advancing strategic interests are not necessarily the same thing. And I would argue that too much of public diplomacy, too much public diplomacy effort is spent in kind of a popularity contest rather than advancing strategic interests. Now beyond, there, there are many aspects of this. Uh, Jean Tan took to, talked about uh, going beyond uh, interfaith and intercultural dialogue, and there are many paths to follow in public diplomacy. But for the purposes of our discussion today, and, and I am to a certain extent trying to be provocative with this, I'm advocating a harder-edged public diplomacy in which being liked is secondary to reaching goals grounded in global and regional realpolitik. Some countries, the United States among them, have found alluring the concept of soft power and its emphasis on a state being attractive to foreign publics. Being attractive is welcome, but that kind of attraction is often transient and does little to secure broad and lasting support from those foreign publics. As a cornerstone of a state's public diplomacy, being admired for being resolute and for standing for something will likely be more valuable than the mere gestures that too often pass for substantive policy. Particularly when facing China, which has shown itself adept at using public diplomacy sometimes and has certainly spent a tremendous amount of money on his public diplomacy efforts, this realism is essential. But for its part, China finds its efforts to rely on soft power and employ public diplomacy weakened by widespread suspicion of its motives. Uh, the latest fiasco with Chinese aid as, as such uh, to the relief of the Philippines underscore this. Uh, just watching the Chinese government scramble over the past week when it first offered a mere $100,000 to the Philippines for relief and then had to backtrack shows that they're not too sure of what, what their public diplomacy, at least in this context, should consist of. The suspicion is strengthened by the recognition that the Chinese public is denied certain basic freedoms. Now, China might argue that such suspicion is misplaced and make the case that its citizens have benefited greatly from economic advances. Also, China can claim to have restored balance to the global power structure, limiting the hegemonic inclinations of the United States. China nurtures the concept of an Asian century, which has appeal within the region. These factors, the Chinese might contend, give validity to China as the principal Asian exponent of soft power. Nonetheless, an, an opportunity exists for another East Asian state to assume a role that encompasses regional leadership and global presence. Korea must decide what it wants. Does it want to follow China's lead in the new alignment of power in Asia, or does it want to assert itself as a competitor now, not necessarily an adversary, but a competitor of China in this matter. If the latter, Korea might do more to establish itself in this position, in part by designing some of its public diplomacy programs 
to explicitly emphasize its leadership capabilities and contrast its attributes with those of China. Now, part of this positioning would be accomplished by carefully planned use of new media. And I find it interesting today that, that nobody has really talked about this as a public diplomacy tool. There are six billion people on the planet. There are five billion of these mobile phones. By the year 2020, at the latest, every mobile phone that is manufactured in the world is going to be a smartphone. And you can just imagine what that kind of connectivity is going to mean and the way that will enhance public diplomacy. In fact, new media, and I won't go off on a long digression about this, but new media have transformed public diplomacy because more people than ever before in the history of the planet are connected to one another, whether it's through cell phones or tablets or desktops or, or whatever. And because they've been connected, they expect to participate. Now, one of the things we saw with the Arab Spring in 2011 was that people expected to get information and they expected to talk back. That's why the points that were made earlier about listening are so exceptionally important. People see foreign affairs now as being a conversation, as being a two-way street. We've come a long way from the Cold War days where you laid out your message, hoped somebody was listening, and there was no possibility of response. So with these new media in hand, I would argue that in this field, Korea has a great advantage over China and other countries with restrictive governments. Social media use is intrinsically linked to the kinds of freedom that the Korean people enjoy and the Chinese public does not. Korea already has considerable amounts of highly visible product on YouTube and other new media venues, but quantity means little unless there is a strategy behind it. Korea might contrast its openness with the restrictive regimes elsewhere in East and Southeast Asia. Again, I'm talking about a harder-edged approach to public diplomacy. For example, instead of dynamic Korea, I would push something that was more political, Korea equals freedom, a rubric that could help further shape East Asian and global publics perceptions of Korea, its people, its politics, and its place in the world. Cultural freedom, as exemplified by Hallyu and, and other aspects of Korean society, political freedom, and individual citizens' participation in the social media campaign would be emphasized. Again, following up on some of the points, uh, particularly that the ambassador made a few moments ago. Freedom is a public diplomacy tool that is underused and can be employed more explicitly. Now these are just starting points for consideration. All these matters must be refined through discussion and careful planning, and that requires a thorough evaluation by the people and the leaders of Korea as to what their strategic interests are, what they want to do with public diplomacy, not just do it for the sake of doing it, but what you want to achieve by using public diplomacy. Please keep in mind, Korea has enormous opportunities to become even more of a regional and a global leader in public diplomacy. I look forward to expanding on these ideas during our discussion here today and during the workshops in the next several days. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Sip, again, listening to his speech. As a Korean, I sort of feel more burdened about the, the the high expectations, you know, outside people have of Korea as a, you know, um, uh, middle power country again. Uh, again, uh, wrapping up his uh, speech, uh, several interesting points. Korea as a freedom country uh, is quite possible, uh, you know, as a new dynamic, uh, vibrant democracy, that's possible. But my question would be, is freedom the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the name Korea? Or oh, isn't it kimchi? Or oh, isn't it something else? Uh, so, how can we connect these things together? That could be a big challenge, I guess. Uh, you could uh, tell us more about that. And uh, new media, of course, new, new media's role in public diplomacy. Of course, we heard so much about the benefits of new media, social media, and also 
uh, we, we are also aware of the, the challenges of social media in public diplomacy. It's not j just a benefit. In many cases, there have been cases where social media actually could damage you know, public diplomacy activities. Uh, we can also uh, take a look at this issue from that point of view. Uh, continuing on, we'll now turn to Mr. Hatos, uh, and he will make a few comments about this presentation. Mr. Hatos, okay, again, why don't we give him a round of applause? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it was indeed a very interesting and exciting uh, uh, panel. Uh, uh, to hear and to, to begin with uh, Mr. Lee's introduction, uh, which, uh, which uh, brought to my mind the power of the metaphor. So middle power, but the power of the metaphor it is the irony of the metaphor from shrimp to dolphins and uh, incidentally uh, the whales uh, came into the picture. Uh, and of course, uh, the, the power of the semantics so that uh, uh, Professor Choice uh, um, talk mentioned uh, Korea's uh, position as bridge between West and East and it came to my mind that uh, of course Hungary is also a bridge between Asia and Europe and when I was in Brussels uh, some five years ago and I met the chief archaeologue of the city, he mentioned that Brussels' specialty is being a bridge between the East and the West. And I was just thinking about where is uh, the West if everything is East uh, from Brussels. And now I'm asking where, where, is, where is the East if, uh, if uh, South Korea is, a, is, is now the bridge between the West and East. But of course, that means that these are very powerful constructions of, of, of semantics which, which uh, helps people, uh, which help people to, 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 to construct uh, uh, ideas. Uh, and of course, to maximize national interest. Another interesting uh, 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 emphasize, uh, I would say that in, in Europe, uh, in, a, in a, such kind of meeting, uh, uh, these words would be rather ostracized uh, uh, to, 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 to really and positively uh, analyze uh, uh, the, the notion and the concept of uh, national interest, to be honest and frank about that. And, and it was very interesting, of course, uh, yes, uh, that the, the, the lifestyle also came uh, uh, ahead. And of, of course, I was thinking about my, my uh, six years old uh, uh, daughter, and uh, we are very much fond of the classical music, and they were, they were just uh, not they were just closed uh, up until the, the last year or the, the year before the last uh, to the pop music, but the Gangnam style broke in with so much power that I couldn't uh, resist anymore. So the flood came with, with, with Korea and with, with, with the Gangnam style. And, and of course, that means for me in the very concrete, uh, uh, the leadership role of, of uh, certain aspects of, 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 uh, of soft power. Of course, uh, uh, but uh, that's uh, that's all very useful. But uh, but uh, I would say that uh, I don't see the, the and this is a kind of provocation. Maybe this is my role. Uh, uh, just to <laughs> recap your bad bad cop <laughs> role from from a previous session. Uh, that that is there any real and substantial uh, difference between the uh, exclusive national interest and the enlightened self-interest. So it's, uh, for me, it's rather a, a game of words. So, of course, uh, exclusivity uh, and uh, being uh, linked to, for example, the prosperity, uh, it sounds a, a a, a, a bit disturbing to me because uh, if uh, one country uh, possesses prosperity, uh, it's its own interest to to spread this prosperity towards its neighbors, uh, just to just to minimize uh, the danger. It's like you know, it's a very old-fashioned uh, Roman Empire and so on. So that's uh, that's uh, for me an ambiguity of 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 of, of this. Uh, uh, 
breaking into this uh, enlightened and exclusive. Uh, and of course, uh, yes, maximization and fulfillment. And very interesting, this, this word of, of listening instead of uh, just talking, uh, uh, which was uh, emphasized both by Professor Choi and Professor Zeeb uh, uh, as a very important factor. And uh, I might say that uh, the, the very fact that Hungary is here is uh, uh, the, the very concrete result and achievement that Cora is uh, listening to, to voices uh, of the world. Um, uh, I'm asking, uh, and this, is, uh, this goes to, to the and this is, a, is my second point to, to the talk of Ambassador Ma, um, whether it helps uh, Korea in, uh, in getting uh, along with its neighbors. So whether, whether a s very strong public diplomacy, a very strong soft power position is really matters when it comes to, to, to pure and naked uh, national interest of, 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 of the very big players like China or, or Japan. So uh, you know, uh, as my country knew, that uh, powerful neighbors uh, are very deep sometimes when they want to be deep. And of course, they listen to voices they want to do. Uh, uh, it's like the, 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 the old uncle, uh, which is very selective in its uh, deepness. So uh, the, sometimes their voices uh, came to them and others not. And uh, uh, th that the other thing, and, and this was highlighted, uh, uh, according to me, by uh, Professor Siebes, uh, uh, very, very uh, enlightening uh, uh, talk uh, that, uh, that of course, public diplomacy could lead to a kind of popularity contest and to a waste of resources, money, and so on, if it's not linked to a strategic uh, view, a strategic advancement of the national interest. So his advocacy of uh, harder edge uh, uh, Diplomacy is uh, re reminds me to this uh, this realistic school. I don't know whether you <laughs> belong to that uh, of 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 the diplomatic studies uh, or international studies. But again, uh, here I have some points that uh, it was uh, it was uh, very pathetic. Uh, uh, it's not that your Samsung, uh, which which was uh, an advocacy <laughs> for 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 Korea and the image of Korea. But again, uh, I don't see the point whether it helps uh, a special country if there is five billion such uh, mediums. Uh, the connectivity means that you will find an incredible amount of new connections and you cannot predict, you cannot uh, control it. I think that's, uh, in a way, it's good. And it, this was uh, the lesson of the Arabic Spring. Uh, very early on, uh, people in the West, uh, people in Europe, gave meanings to this Arabic Spring, Arab Spring, uh, new democracy, and so on. And it's hardly, uh, I hardly find uh, this, uh, this building up in a, in a European way or in a European perception. And of course, this is also a critic of our unique MENA project, which is uh, very rigid in its, uh, in its following up uh, uh, thing. So that's, that's my question mark to uh, Professor Zeeb's uh, remark uh, that the smartphone, the connectivity uh, can help uh, Korea to achieve a leadership role, but of course, uh, that's also something the leadership is in a way is also achieved by combining freedom, democracy, and efficacy in, in a country such in yours. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Hatos. Uh, again, you know, it seems to me in this world of public diplomacy, there are so many, too many breaches. Everybody wants to play this bridge role, not just Korea and, and many other countries as well. Uh, he uh, talked about uh, the difference between the exclusive national interest and enlightened uh, national interest. Uh, I honestly believe that this is the most fundamental question you have to answer today because you know, how can you uh, balance between your national interests, national advocacy, and global common good. I'm sh I, I believe that's the main theme of our uh, program today, and this is related to that issue. Uh, I hope to uh, hear some answers to 
to this and he specifically asked a question for Mr. C about the role of social media again uh, as challenges and opportunities at the same time. And now we will turn to uh, Mrs. Tan uh, from Singapore uh, International Foundation. Mrs. Tan, please welcome uh, uh, Mrs. Tan. For I'll make this very short since I'm supposed to play the good cop. I'll only say um, good things. So I've um, had a very interesting afternoon listening to all three um, presenters. Um, I'll just say that uh, uh, I think Dr. Lee's done an excellent job um, sort of summarizing and giving us the main points of each. Um, what uh, I suppose resonated with me was really um, what uh, Dr. Choi said about Korea and playing the role of uh, a bridge builder um, between um, big and small countries. And actually, I'd like to hear a bit more uh, elaboration on exactly, because we hear that concept uh, all the time, um, exactly what uh, role Korea would play in terms of uh, bridge building. Um, with Ambassador Ma, I think what struck me is uh, something that uh, we realize too in a country like Singapore, that if you want to do public diplomacy, one of the things is um, starting with the foreigners in your country. Uh, in Singapore, one in four is a foreigner. And so a lot of our um, efforts is to really connect with the, um, the international community in Singapore. And I suppose uh, that's how you start the life cycle. Um, of engagement and re-engagement with, with the publics um, uh, that you seek to, to um, sort of influence. Um, I tend to agree with uh, Prof. Seep um, about the importance of new media as a, as a new uh, PD tool. And I think uh, uh, if we do not harness that um, in our practice of public diplomacy, um, then your organization can, well, atrophy. Because um, increasingly, I think there's less and less need for intermediaries like cultural institutions or aid agencies because people organize themselves online and in virtual communities and, um, you know, uh, able to connect and collaborate without, uh, without, uh, without us. So, I mean, what can... Um, practitioners, for instance, do uh, to harness the power of, of the social media tool. And that's also something that we grapple with as, you know, um, executive directors and, and CEOs of such organizations. Um, but I guess I want uh, to go back to basics uh, and perhaps ask a, a layman's uh, question, since I'm not an academic. Um, really, I mean, listening to all of you, I, I, the question I really had in mind is, um, why does Korea need to use uh, soft power? Uh, aren't we preaching uh, to the converted? I mean, Korea enjoys immense popularity, not just for cuisine and culture, but you know, even in its uh, technology and in, in business. So, um, what? Um, uh, why is soft power important to Korea? I think it's a question that I have, and, and what might be some of its constraints rather than you know the future role that it has to play? That would be my question for um, our panelists. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Pan, again. Uh, now, uh, again, she asked uh, several questions to uh, three presenters. Uh, for uh, Professor Che, it's a, a question about the bridge role again. And for Ambassador Ma, uh, mainly focusing on this foreigner's role in public diplomacy, you know, Singapore was a good example of doing that, and Korea is also trying to use foreigners for its own uh, public diplomacy. And probably M Ambassador Ma can uh, elaborate more on, on this point. And also for Professor Sip uh, about the, the social media role in, in, in public diplomacy. And Mrs. Tan's uh, point, interesting one, was the you know, as this uh, role of social media grows, perhaps the role of intermediaries can can decline, perhaps shrink. And what are we going to do? And you know, if everything is done by social media, what's the role of people, practitioners in this area? That could be another interesting question. And also for all three presenters, particularly uh, Ambassador Ma and uh, 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 Professor Che, uh, 
uh, why do we need, why does Korea need a, a, a soft power campaign? You know, uh, it seems to her that that Korea already has that. Uh, why is that so important? So maybe we can uh, start from uh, Professor Choi addressing these questions, please. Okay, I'll start with the last question about uh, why Korea is so uh, uh, enthusiastic about uh, the soft power campaign. Uh, I, I, I don't know, but I would say because of the, the sort of trauma that Korean people have about what we call Korean discount, uh, Korea is, as uh, Professor Gilboa said in the morning, we are a divided country and we are still in conflict with North Korea and we also have uh, history disputes, territorial disputes with neighboring countries. So uh, from, I don't know, from outsider's point of view, Korea might be viewed as a, a little bit unstable uh, or in risky position or something like that. Uh, and uh, Korea now is a, a, a prospering country, but uh, many foreigners who haven't visit, who haven't paid a visit to Korea in recent years still remember the Korea 40 or five, I mean 40 or 50 years ago. Uh, in their mind, Korea is still a poor country to be helped by outsiders, so that kind of image uh, is ingrained in many uh, uh, foreigners, we think. So uh, to overcome those uh, the negative image or prejudice that might exist in the minds of foreigners, I think we are so you know, eager to uh, do these soft power things. Okay. Uh, and uh, what kind of breaching role uh, is Korea playing? Uh, uh, let me note first that uh, in my presentation, I say that Korea has a potential to play the role of breaching country. It, I'm not, but maybe it is playing a little bit, but uh, I don't know if it is playing the breaching role right now very actively. But it has a potential because uh, it's the Korea's unique experience uh, as a, a country that emerged from the ashes of uh, the Korean War in the 1950s uh, to become a middle power uh, in global politics. And uh, as the mod moderator said, we thought of ourselves as shrimp in the past. Uh, so we have that shrimp mindset uh, in our corner of mind, but now we are big, sort of, you know, uh, affluent country, so now we have dolphin mind as well. So we have this mixture of two different kinds of mindset. So we can understand small power, we can, small countries, we can understand more advanced countries. So we can, if we are uh, willing to listen, uh, then I think we can uh, help them communicate. So in that regard, uh, and in, in, uh, in the case of Bridge of East-West, uh, Korea is an Asian country, uh, still preserving a lot of uh, Asian values and ethics, but we are also very uh, fast in importing uh, institutions and worldviews of uh, the, the Western world, universalized. So in that sense, uh, Korea uh, is, uh, can be a, a bridge between East and West. Okay. And uh, about uh, the difference between exclusive natural interest and the enlightened self-interest, well, uh, you are right. The, the difference is not very clear cut. Uh, there is a, a huge gray area. Uh, uh, for example, even in the security area, uh, a lot of people are talking about cooperative security. In the past, security matters was regarded as a zero-sum game. Uh, and every country, all, all, all countries are in security dilemma. Uh, so they are engaged in 
arms race. But uh, that doesn't guarantee your security, people realize. So that these days we are talking about cooperative security. So even in the security area, uh, the, the cooperation rather than uh, competition uh, give you more security. Okay. Wealth is the same story, I guess. But still, still, uh, as Professor Zid uh, uh, alluded, the competition um, or balancing is a huge part of uh, the interstate relationship uh, in these days. Uh, so in that regard, uh, the secret and the prosperity has that, that attributes, uh, that still uh, has that attributes. Uh, so uh, I try to be clear uh, and I try, I mean, uh, the distinction was uh, for the sake of convenience for the, uh, the understanding. So, uh, okay, uh, I think I'll stop here uh, for now. Uh, thank you, Professor Che. And now we'll turn to uh, uh, Ambassador Ma. Uh, uh, thank you very much for the very insightful the, uh, questions. Uh, still. Uh, I want to uh, first address uh, the, uh, the question raised by the Chin Ten. Uh, how, why the uh, so Korea uh, has to use this soft power? Why it is uh, so powerful? Uh, let's go back to those the uh, the series. So this morning still we talked a lot. What is the background? What is the uh, uh, key element of the public diplomacy? That is to win the heart and the mind of the foreign people. So then, how we can do that? Uh, the second point is uh, the Korea's economy is uh, very much is the, uh, dependent on the uh, foreign element. So that means uh, we are heavily dependent on the, the foreign trade and uh, investment. And in such a case, uh, uh, the image of Korea is also very important. Another element is uh, this morning there are some the panelists said that if a image is a set upon a, a certain country. It is a very difficult to change it. The 90% of the image is already fixed and how we can change it. The based on all, on all those just the element, I want to say that how powerful the soft uh, power is. Uh, in the case of Korea, uh, we have uh, the several countries that are very close geographically to, uh, to Korea. So when we expand our the, uh, cultures like uh, the uh, current uh, the K-pop or k Gijin or uh, the K-dramas, it touch the minds of the, those people because we have the same cultural background and we have uh, the uh, same the, uh, mindset. So it is a very good. Nowadays, uh, there are so many the foreigners, the foreign tourists com coming to Korea just to enjoy the, what they like about Korea. So in that sense, I think the, the soft power plays a great role in attracting the foreigners to Korea. It is also leading to the increase of our uh, trade volumes as well as uh, more the, uh, introducing the foreign capitals uh, in my country. Second, uh, the uh, questions you, you raised about uh, the, uh, the foreigners in the country. Actually, the, we are getting lessons from our mistakes. At the first stages, there were a lot of cases that mistreatment of foreigners in my country, and it were, they were reported in, my, uh, in our newspapers. And then slowly we think that, look, the size of the foreigners becomes bigger and bigger because we have to depend on the their foreign their, uh, workers uh, their, uh, uh, also. Therefore, we are giving serious attention to it, and then, oh, we need to make some actions to improve the treatment of, uh, upon the, those foreigners. Therefore, our government engaged in it and also the foreign embassies in Seoul also cooperating with our government. Plus, NGOs. Our NGOs are very much independent and they are very they are constructive as their roles they play. Therefore, they are engaging in these matters. So slowly, so all those problems are getting the uh, uh, resolved nowadays. Uh, 
Thank you, Ambassador. Now, uh, Professor Sip. Thank you. Uh, to respond to several of these questions, the one about why does Korea need soft power? Well, whether you're a shrimp or a, or a dolphin, China is a killer whale. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it just it depends on, on how you want to live in this neighborhood. Uh, the future is it, it is going to be one of increasing Chinese dominance unless there's some pushback, and that's what I'm talking about. Now, I'm not talking about going to war or anything like that, but just in terms of influence within the region, China is working very hard to assert its dominance in that way, and if that's, if that's what Korea decides it wants, that's fine, but if it decides it wants more balance, then it needs to act fairly soon. In terms of the role of the social media, Really what I'm suggesting just is that, that those who are doing diplomacy recognize its pervasiveness and influence and how dramatically things have changed. Just 10 years ago, there was no Twitter, there was no Facebook, there was no YouTube, there was no Sino Weibo. And now, and just one figure that sticks in my mind, two years ago, YouTube had one trillion visitors. One trillion, 12 zeros. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I mean, that means people are spending perhaps an inordinate amount of their time working with these, with these various media. And these are tools that are easily put to use, but there has to be a strategy. You can't just say, well, Psy had 10 million viewers on YouTube and so Korea's in great shape. No, it takes more than that, and that's why I was suggesting that the using these media with a concerted plan uh, that advances Korea's interest is something that needs to be thought about. Nobody's got the firm answer to that. Nobody has, I mean, we, we've seen you know, in the aftermath of the Arab Spring where everybody thought, wow, look, these new media, they're, they're gonna give us all democracy in the Middle East. Didn't happen, and people overrated what these media could do, and they underestimated some of the real causes of the rebellions. I won't go into great detail on that, but my point is if you're doing diplomacy, if you're doing public diplomacy, you need to try to understand the, the impact of these new media. And if you don't, you're cutting out not just the young generation, but more and more people across the board who are using these media. So that's, that, I think, is, is the basic message about, about the new media. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Okay, uh, Mr. Ma, please. Uh, I want to respond uh, to the uh, Mr. Hato's uh, the uh, comment and the questions. So while the uh, China and uh, the Japan, the big the uh, interest uh, are being they competed in this uh, North East East Asia, how the the uh, soft power or how public diplomacy can work? Uh, I think uh, uh, the question is uh, very important because uh, it gives us uh, some thought about our policies. However, there are the historical issues and the political issues which are very difficult to be solved uh, uh, concerning the characteristics of uh, the current uh, government uh, in uh, those uh, the, uh, countries. Uh, currently, uh, most of the uh, our the uh, dialogue channels are stopped or closed uh, between the government. So every day the, uh, we see that the uh, harsh the statement is uh, co uh, are coming from the uh, the, uh, the uh, those the government officials. So in such a case, what we can do? Government cannot do anything vis-a-vis uh, -vis the other governments. So I think in such a case public diplomacy is the only way to open some room for the reconciliation. Therefore, uh, we try to our best to put this uh, public diplomacy element in the relations uh, uh, among those three countries. Recently, there was uh, uh, the uh, Korea-Japan the, uh, uh, festival, annual festival, uh, held uh, in Korea as well as uh, in uh, Japan. Even though there is a very harsh uh, the, uh, confrontation uh, between the government, those people's enthusiasm to gather uh, at the stores of festivals and they enjoyed a lot, they like each other very much. We saw the, so, some 
the uh, uh, indications of hope. This is the, the only way we think that public diplomacy can uh, contribute ameliorating the, our relationship, which is very hardened with, among the countries. Uh, thank you, Ambassador Ma. We just have around you know, 12 minutes uh, before we open our floor for a uh, question and answer. Uh, do you want to add anything, uh, Mrs. Tan and, and Mr. Hattos? Okay, then we have uh, exactly 11 minutes. Uh, we will take a few questions and, and we will let them answer uh, together. So we will start with gentlemen at, uh, right there. With, can uh, somebody give him the microphone, please? Uh, please identify yourself. Yeah, I'm Wing Commander Dixit from India. Thank you once again for that en enlightening session. Uh, my question or my point is for Professor Philip. He had made a statement that nobody has explored the use of smartphones for PD. I would like to inform the House also that India and the Ministry of External Affairs in India has already uh, commissioned a universal app. Uh, it's a widespread, uh, widely used app. It is utilized for very various queries and all of passport or visa. We have a, a global magazine called India Perspectives in 14 international languages. That is also available as an e-zine on it and there are very many apps. So India has already started this and I'm sure that many, very many countries may have been working on it. So that is the point I want to make to Mr. Philip. Let me just quickly say, um, if I said that I misspoke and so I, I don't think that's the case. Just holding her hand. Yes. Oh, I'm Rim Han, and I'm a student at Yonsei University who majors intellectual property, and want to make a uh, specialize in na nation branding. Uh, my question is to Ambassador Ma, which is um, that you said that we actually, first of all, we the public diplomacy. The first role was to promote Korea, but now now it's coming like going to promote like good deeds, and I just wanted to mention that I, luckily I was been in like international community in Korea, which is like Yonsei International <laughs> Dormitory. And I felt that um, many foreigners are coming to Korea because of, um, especially young people, because of like K-pop like, and dramas. But I don't just wanted to emphasize the popularity because um, I think <coughs> because of that, that attraction, we have we have a capability to promote more good deeds, just like what uh, Singapore did for, <laughs> for the better word, like um, project. So uh, my theme is that since Korea, for example, since Korea had this like GGGI, which calls like global green growth, which is like common goods for this um, international society. And, but I, I was trying to preach that GGGI that can you make some educational um, program for a uh, college student? Because there are so many exchange students who, who are from, who are the member of this GGGI, and they might be, they want to be, might be interested in this kind of program. And, and I think the university can play that role. Um, and the, the good thing is that exchange students will go back to their country, which means they could um, continue these activities in their country. So I think like this, Having a lot of um, foreigners is also good for like Korea, but also you could use as a very good tool to uh, better so for the better word. Wrap up, and please. using the university also as a mechanism for the okay. dissemination of that right. kind of education, right? I think okay, thank important. you. Right now, uh, the gentleman over there. Yeah. So this question was for Ambassador Ma about using uh, exchange students and training programs for. Uh, no, GGGI, for example, the international organizations. Please. My name is Denji Abdullahi. I work with the Federal Ministry of Tourism and Culture in Nigeria. Well, my observation would just be more of in the spirit of affirming Ambassador uh, Sam's presentation of the successes of the strategies of the Korean uh, Public Diplomacy Initiative with a local example. In Nigeria, we have the Korean Cultural Center, and I know that center engages in a lot of uh, activities in terms of promoting Korean culture, in terms of encouraging the local populace there to learn Korean language, 
The center also does a uh, competition, this K-pop competition, which is hotly contested for by Nigerian youths and the winners are brought to Korea here to participate in the world uh, contest of K-pop and many other such initiatives. And I know it is very likely in the country itself, sometimes people can view these activities with suspicion that by thinking that, look, it is another way of subtle imperialism. This idea of public diplomacy can be a subtle way of another country engaging in imperialism. I, my response has always been that we live in a world where we need to create an understanding where we are de-emphasizing conflict and competition. And the only way you can do this is to create international understanding. And the way you know the effect of this public diplomacy is when you take it to some third world countries, where you find the government of those countries not really supporting activities of people within that country, particularly the non-government organization. I'm saying this because the Korean Center in Nigeria also support theatrical activities that are not Korean, that are basically Nigerian. There are groups there that are starved of government support and in terms of promoting our own Nigerian culture. And you see the Korea Center assisting this group. There are a number of technical groups that I belong to, that I initiated, that I'm part of, that has gained this support. So what I'm saying is that the effect of public diplomacy that has been done in Nigeria by Korea through the Korea Cultural Center, is the impact is quite huge because uh, without, saying, without, without saying it, it has enamored uh, Korea before Nigeria on the audience. Thank you. Well, sir, we had a comment rather than a question, I believe. Uh, oh, can you, uh, this lady over there, uh, please? Thank you so much. Caitlin Byrne from Bond University, uh, Australia. A question really coming back to strategic interests, and it was great to finish with this uh, panel really recapping on strategic interests. And one that I'm very interested in is the role of public diplomacy, both externally, but also internally with a domestic audience in relation to North, uh, to North Korea and the prospects for reconciliation on the Korean Peninsula. Uh, can take just one short question, please. Uh, you know, make it uh, over there, uh, uh, yes. Back there. Uh. Um, my name is Jia Cha Tipumi Charanun. I'm from Thailand and I'm a graduate student in Seoul National Univers University. And my question is quite specific. Um, Korean is one of unique cases located in um, uh, as a Asian Pacific, where there are a great numbers of overlap multilateralisms and um, regionalisms. S and moreover, Korea has faced a security problem related to North Korea. So is it necessary for Korea to choose a group of like-minded countries and strengthen uh, the group network to achieve the group goal, which may be related to um, North Korean uh, security problems. Um, and so my question is, um, where or which states that Korea can play a major powers and use public di diplomacy? So my question is for Mr. Mar and Professor Choi. Okay, thank you. I think uh, we have to stop taking questions. Uh, let's. Uh, could you uh, elaborate us the, the last question? Uh, the last question, uh, again, I guess uh, this uh, Korea's uh, attempt, efforts to network with like-minded countries in this region uh, in, in handling the issue of North Korea for its public diplomacy. I believe that's the, uh, the last question we had from this uh, student from Thai, Thailand. Okay, and uh, before that, uh, and, and Ms. Ambassador Ma and Professor Choi can, uh, both of you or either of you can answer this. And before that, uh, we had this uh, 
a question from this Australian uh, uh, participant about, again, about this uh, strategic uh, public diplomacy in terms of North Korea. I think both questions are similar. Uh, uh, I think both or either this Korean uh, panelists can answer this, please. Yes, uh, I want to address the, the first question uh, raised uh, by the, uh, the students. Uh, yes, it is a very good point uh, uh, to raise the uh, foreign students studying in this country. How we can take care of them and how we can make the public diplomacy over those students. They are very important the element for our the, uh, public diplomacy schemes. Uh, they are whatever they are, uh, it is good for them to understand Korea and uh, to introduce the Korea to them. I think that we have to utilize the, those opportunities. Uh, you mentioned that there are some kind of uh, training programs at GGGI. That is an excellent idea. However, you have to remember that GGGI is uh, not our government organization. It is international organization already. So therefore, such a kind of uh, programs can be arranged through the Secretariat of GGGI, which is going to be uh, set up very soon. They are in December, uh, they have the, the, the Secretariat. But this is uh, the only uh, uh, example for the international organization. But there are many other opportunities in Korea, such as the government organization also opens uh, many internships for the foreigners, and also the, uh, the uh, corporations, government corporations, as well as the, the uh, NGOs and uh, the private sectors too. So you can utilize all those uh, the, uh, channels uh, to provide the opportunities to the, those uh, the foreign students studying in Korea. About uh, the lady uh, from Australia and uh, the, uh, Thailand, uh, how the, uh, we can have uh, the, uh, uh, the improvement of relations and reconciliation of relations between the two Koreas and how it would uh, the prospect. It is uh, very difficult to predict uh, the further development on the Korean Peninsula because uh, uh, we have a very limited uh, information and also very limited uh, the communications uh, between the two countries. Uh, currently, at this moment, uh, well, we could not have uh, res uh, re uh, resumed uh, the six-party talks even. So there are several the, uh, uh, dialogues are going on, but we could not uh, produce the uh, uh, produce the fruit yet. Uh, therefore, uh, still the uh, government to government the channels and the relationship is in a very high the, uh, uh, tension. However, we think that we have to prepare the unifications. Therefore. We need to have a sort of a the, uh, communications uh, between the, the two peoples. In North Korea, we think that there are a lot of us, the uh, people in North Korea also enjoy the, some the, uh, uh, cultural things uh, from, the, uh, uh, from, the, from the South. I think a sense of a community is a basis for the unifications. How we get the, some lessons from the German unifications, how those people uh, get have such a, uh, the, uh, unification in a very short period of time. That means that they already have a sense of community. So be, even though we do not have a government-to-government government relationship in a very good shape, uh, but we still want to have uh, communications and the exchanges and also the uh, uh, cultural things between the two Koreas. So in, in the same sense, uh, the uh, question raised by the Thai stu uh, the, uh, uh, student, we think that if there are any the things that we can do with uh, like-minded groups, uh, we are going to promote it. Uh, as you remember that uh, my government, my current government already announced uh, that the uh, uh, trust building the, uh, politics as well as uh, uh, Northeast Asia's uh, the peace uh, concept. This Dongbuga Pyeongha Hyemnyeok Gusang, this is the basis for the how we can promote uh, the reconciliation, the cooperation among those light-minded uh, groups uh, to promote uh, uh, peace on the Korean Peninsula and the uh, Northeast Asia. Uh, uh, Professor Che, please. Okay, um, with, with, with regard to uh, the North Korean issue, uh, I think we can connect it to the regional integration effort by Korea because uh, a lot of Korean people think that the regional integration in this region would help the prospect uh, for the reunification because the Korea formerly anchored in the community of East Asia could be 
even after re reunification, it would be less menacing to the neighboring countries. So uh, uh, right now, uh, a lot of people in Korea is uh, uh, promoting uh, the, the necessity uh, of uh, the regional integration these days. Of course, that helps. Kore that could help Korean economy, uh, but also uh, in the long run, uh, it could help uh, the, the Korea, uh, you know, uh, the pursue the, its re reunification policy as well. Okay. Ah, uh, thank you, Professor Che. Unfortunately, I think uh, time is up. We have to uh, wrap up this session. Uh, too bad, you know, we are. I think a few minutes uh, uh, behind our schedule and we passed our deadline. As a former journalist, you know, deadline is everything. And I'd like to keep it that way. Thank you, our distinguished uh, panelists and floor. Uh, I guess we learned a couple of things. Good thing, a uh, bad thing. I'll start with bad thing. Listening to the speeches and everything, Korea, we feel very heavily burdened. A lot of expectations, you know, the world has of Korea. The good thing is, we are not a shrimp anymore. We are a dolphin. So next time you eat shrimp, don't think of Korea. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll close this session now. <laughs>